Welcome to another plotterroot.com tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the mobile version of our root planner. The best way to access plotterroot.com on a mobile device is to install the Plotterroot app, which is what I'm using here. But you can also access plotterroot.com in the normal way using any web browser. You can find instructions for installing the app under the navigation menus. So, I've signed in and then I selected Plotter Root to load the Root Planner, which is what you can see here. If you're used to using the desktop version of the Root Planner, you'll notice that the mobile version has a familiar interface. However, there are some important differences, which I'll take you through in a moment. In the top left above the map is the main navigation menu. Under here, there are a number of options for creating and finding routes as well as links to other helpful information. You'll find this menu on all the pages on the mobile app. In the top right hand corner is the settings icon. The mobile app has all the same settings as the main website, plus one extra one called Plot on Drag. By default, the mobile route planner will plot points each time you drag the map. But you can also turn this off if you prefer to plot points by tapping the plot button each time. At the side of the map, you can see two buttons labelled Plot and Undo, and in the centre of the map is a crosshair. As it's hard to plot accurately by touching the map with your finger, the mobile app takes a different approach to plotting points. Instead, you effectively fire points at the map using the crosshair and plot button. I'll demonstrate this in a moment. There are a number of other buttons on the map which provide useful functions. At the bottom, you'll see three buttons. The middle one will center the map on your current position, and the other two enable you to zoom into the current position of the slider, which I'll show you in a moment, or to zoom out to see the whole route. At the top, there are two buttons. The one on the left gives you a choice of various different types of maps, and the one on the right opens up a search box that you can use to search for locations or routes. Below the map is a footer bar, in the bottom left corner of this is a toolbox icon. This gives you access to various plotting and editing functions. In the centre at the bottom, you see the auto plot buttons. These are used to activate automated plotting by road, on foot and by bike. And to the right of this is a slider icon, which toggles the display of the position slider. Dragging this will show you the distance at points along any route you've plotted. In the top right corner, just above the map, is a second menu icon. This displays a menu of options that relate specifically to the route you're plotting, such as elevation profiles and directions for your route, as well as options to save, print, share and download it. And lastly, in the middle of the top of the map is the distance counter, which shows you the length of your route. Now that I've given you a brief explanation of the user interface, we'll have a go at plotting a simple route. I'm going to start by searching for a map location, so I'll click the search button. You can choose what you want to search for, either places or routes, by tapping on the right side of the search box. You can also access any places you've previously bookmarked by tapping the bookmark icon. On this occasion, I'm going to search for a place called East Horsley. Now I can zoom in closer to the exact spot where I want to start off by pinch zooming with my fingers. To plot a point, I aim the crosshair near the correct place on the map and press the plot button to turn on recording. Then I drag the map to start plotting. Each time I drag the map, it will plot a point. As with the desktop site, I can use the auto plot options to automatically plot points for me along roads and paths. If you want to move the map without plotting points, just disengage the plot button by pressing it once more. This is a really quick way to plot points on a touchscreen device particularly when used in combination with the auto plot options. Once you finish plotting, you can save your route by selecting 
save from the top right menu. We don't want to keep this one, so we won't do that now. Instead, we'll have a look around the area for routes other people have shared. To do this, we just need to select Find a route from the main menu. The number of routes found in the vicinity is shown above the map. Clicking on one of the icons will bring up a route preview, which we can then select to see the full details of the route if we wish. There is also an option to see the search results in a list view, which we can filter by typing in the filter box above the list. We can also sort and filter the results in lots of other ways, using the icons at the bottom of the screen. To go back to plotting routes again, we just need to click the X button in the top right of the map, or select Plot a Route from the main menu. That's it for this tutorial. There are many more features to explore, but hopefully I've given you a quick overview to get you started. You can also check out our how-to guides for more help and advice.